The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, live in studio, waiting to take your calls on your health. Perhaps you've had a problem, you've tried, you've applied, you've done all kinds of things you can think of, but guess what? Hasn't worked out the way you want to? Well, here's an opportunity. Give me a call, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Hey, everybody, you're out there on the highways and byways and shopping and poking around and doing the things that, you know, this time of the season brings. Well, please do one thing for me. Be very careful. The traffic out there is like crazy. And be careful of the other guy. You know, be courteous and give them the room that they need to have to get in and out and make it a, a very happy holiday season, but more importantly, a healthy one. We have a very special program for you today. And one that I, I look forward to a couple times a year of, of hosting someone who is a friend and uh, someone who I admire relative to the work that he does. And I'm talking about Dr. Michael Chung. He is the owner of Soft Touch Dental Care in Oakton, Virginia. Mike is a, a dentist extraordinary. He is proficient and a master at neuromuscular dentistry. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, what that means. But the, the topic of the program today is that we're going to talk about what happens when your jaw, your vertical dimension of your teeth aren't in the position that they need to be and the health consequences that can come about because of it from breathing to headaches to even visual disturbances and imbalances and so forth, uh, why you have sleep apnea, uh, even situations where you know your energy drops uh, dramatically. But having said that, Dr. Michael Chung, welcome. Thank you so much. I am so honored to be here. It's fun. It's fun, Dr. Mike. It's, you know, uh, every time that I have you on the program, we go through different pieces of dentistry that a lot of our listeners haven't thought about or haven't heard before. And this is one that I want people to take special consideration to because we're coming into that time of the year right now where, you know, there's a lot of colds and respiratory problems and flus and so forth. And what people don't understand is that they can be made much worse because of bad dentistry. But l let's start with basics. Let's start with uh, the body was designed to have a upper and lower uh, jaw, if you will, the maxilla, the mandible, to align properly. And that alignment starts with the temporal mandibular joint, and then everything else moves forward. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, when does this disturbance start? How does it move forward in life? And we'll kind of move our audience in the direction that we want them to learn. Sure. Um, it actually starts very early in life. Um, as you're developing, uh, even even two, three, maybe even as a birth, uh, just being an infant, uh, it can affect everything, how this baby develops, uh, whether that baby gets a baby bottle or whether it's breastfeeding, because the breastfeeding actually teaches the baby all the neuromuscular uh, strength and teachings that baby needs to grow their jaws properly and uh, simultaneously breathe through their nose properly. And mouth breathing is one of the major causes why there's all these malocclusion in kids, and eventually uh, it affects their nitrous levels, and that can cause ADD and ADHD in young kids. Uh, and and obviously, eventually, their jaw development will will not develop properly, especially the upper jaw. So let me, let me back you up just a little bit because uh, you hit a buzzword here that is something that children suffer from and adults as well. So we're, we're talking about you know children, uh, and I'm going to kind of recap this: that don't suckle, don't go to the breast uh, early on, and continue that way. It should be for over a year. Uh, don't develop the mouth occlusion and the uh, suckling reflex that is we're supposed to have and, and, and supposed to be prominent in our lives. And 
they go to bottle or they, you know, whatever, they make it easy for mom and they make it easier for the kid. But you, you said that a child who doesn't suckle can develop ADD and ADHD. Correct. Um, <clears throat> what happens is uh, if the child starts mouth breathing, the only way to get proper nitrous levels in your blood is through your nasal cavities. It, it's, the enzyme is only available in your paranasal sinuses and it is not in the mouth. So if the child breathes m mainly through their mouth, they will always have low nitrous levels and nitrous levels are very important for function of your body from vasodilation to, uh, you know, all of the cardiovascular functions. It's very, very important in many, many forms in your body. So we're looking at a deprivation of oxygen to the tissue. Well, oxygen, yes, you will not get as much oxygen mouth breathing as well as uh, through the nose, but mainly we're talking nitrous levels that, that really affects their ADD. Okay, so now we have a child who grows into a young person, who grows into a teenager, who grows into an adult, who continues to carry these problems throughout their whole life and has put on Ritalin and put on uh, Adderall and in other drugs that are becoming innovative today. So you're saying that so much of this is not necessarily neurogenic because, and by the way, uh, the diagnosis is ADD, ADHD. There's, there's, it's not a medical diagnosis. It's just a symptom representation. So you're saying this goes all the way back to bad occlusion. Yes, I believe it does. Um, and the, the fact that in almost every one of these cases, you will f find that their upper jaw has not fully developed to their genetic potential. And it's always smaller, it's always retruded, and it, it basically affects their airway as well. So all their airway spaces always will be smaller. Uh, so if you allowed that genetic potential, that genes to s express themselves and allow them to grow with proper appliances and things, uh, then they can actually have normal breathing patterns. Uh, they will actually be able to breathe through their nose, or they may have some other obstructions in their uh, paranasal sinuses, such as, you know, adenoids and tonsils that are swollen constantly, and they, and they may also be closing off the airway. So you have to look at uh, their airway um, patency as well. Well, that's incredible. That's, you know, let's, let's follow, we'll follow up on that a little bit later because I want to get into more things to kind of set the stage of what we're talking about here at 888-630-9625. Give us a call if you have a question for Dr. Chung. Uh, Dr. Michael Chung is a, is a neuromuscular dentist. He's general dentistry as well. Uh, he does things extraordinarily well. Just, you know, I want to remind our audience that, you know, when you go to a dentist and even when you have braces put on your teeth and so forth, the dentist is trying to approximate the teeth instead of approximating the temporal mandibular joint. And it starts with making sure that the TMJ, the temporal mandibular joint, is stable because that's, we call it in my business, the pump handle of the skull, of the bones of the head, and because they move millimetrically as you breathe in and out. And if that temporal mandibular joint is not in sync the way it's supposed to, those bones don't work. And so you have a lot of other things that are that are going on. So. Dr. Mike, when you, you look at a patient, let's, let's talk about the effect that this uh, malalignment has on you know, other body systems and the symptoms that you see that you can say it's coming from here. Yes. I mean, like I said earlier, we almost always find uh, patients that walk into my office are usually pain patients. They have a lot of TMD problems. Uh, a lot of times they may have uh, obstructive sleep apnea issues as well. They'll have headaches. A multitude of symptoms, and uh, almost in 99% of the times, it is their upper jaw that was not fully developed that caused all the issues as a child, uh, and and it falls back again to mouth breathing, and mouth breathing may have been caused by adenoids and tonsils that that were not identified. Uh, they may have tongue tie that could have caused problems of their tongue. Uh, so those issues um, have to be addressed when they're young so that they don't have these issues later because uh, they will eventually, your body can uh, actually adapt to a lot of things, but there will come a point where your body just cannot handle that point anymore, and then it'll, you'll display lots of symptoms such as headaches, pain, you know, clicking and popping of your joints, uh, poor neck posture, uh, rotated C1, uh, C2 in your neck, uh, so so on and so on. And as you know, it, it will basically go all the way down your spinal column. 
because everything else is trying to adapt to a bad uh, jaw alignment. Or here's, a, here's an interesting situation that you see with many patients is that that first vertebrae in your neck, cervical one, and second uh, vertebrae, cervical two, is the pivot point for every other activity that happens the rest of the spine. And so what we're talking about here, and, and you know, what you need to know is that we often, you know, we'll look at a patient, we'll examine them for a plethora of different types of symptom representations, and we know that we've got to get that, that jaw uh, position normalized before any of our work will, will hold, will stabilize. The first and second cervical vertebrae control parasympathetic response neurologically in the body. And so what we see is when that upper cervical vertebrae is not stabilized, cervical one and on cervical two, we see hyperactivity. We see a, uh, an adult, a child, that everything underneath that going into the organ systems are hyperactive, even to the point of seeing some effect on cardiac function, irritable bowel problems, and so forth, because of that parasympathetic inability at that point, because the alignment is not there. And, you know, we see it after that. We, we do a history. You know, have you ever had an accident? What positions do you study in? Do you sleep on your stomach? The next question I always ask if I have any suspicion is, what dental work have you had done? And so here's my question, because I know the way you work and the, the work that you have is, is superlative. Uh, can bad dentistry cause those first two vertebrae to misalign? Oh, absolutely. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, they've done lots of studies on uh, rats where they put a little bump on one of their teeth and you'll see them develop scoliosis. Uh, it, it absolutely, it's like having a, a rock in one of your shoes and you're walking. It, that pain will prevent you from walking properly, and eventually it's going to affect all the other areas of your spinal column. Same thing can happen in your teeth. Somebody puts in a bad filling or a crown that's too high or too low, and, and your bite is shifted, and it will affect definitely how your C1 and C2 uh, sits in your in your whole spinal column. You know, I, I tell an interesting story in my book, Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program, by the way, which is a great Christmas present for any of you that don't have the book. And a young girl, a patient of mine, her whole family would come in periodically uh, to maintain. This is a young athlete who's doing great, but they wanted to put braces on her teeth. And so she went to the dentist and had braces put on this summer, but the, because he wasn't going to see her for a couple months, she was going to grandma's house, he tightened them down too tight and gave her pain medication and so forth. When I saw her in the fall when she was going back to school, this child who had a perfectly straight spine now had a 28 degree curvature, spinal curvature. And it was due to the braces. Unfortunately, I had a friend in Buffalo, New York by the name of Mike Marfino, who was an applied kinesiologist. Mike was professor of dentistry at University of Buffalo. And between the two of us, we were able to straighten her out. Dr. Michael Chung is my guest in studio. An amazing man, incredible knowledge base when it comes to neuromuscular dentistry and the effect that the jaw has on the rest of the body. That's what we're talking about today. And give us a call at 888-630-9625, and we'll answer your questions directly. We're coming up to a short break. Don't go away. We have some really fascinating things and some things that I want to talk to Dr. Mike about. You're listening to Dr. Tom. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live in studio, 888-630-9625, 888-630-9625. That's how you find us here in studio. And when we're not here, it's real simple. You can go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellecare.com. My guest in studio, Dr. Michael Chung. He is the owner and proprietor of Soft Touch Dental Care. Dr. Mike is a neuromuscular dentist. He's been trained out of the very prestigious LVI Global out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and he's a master in understanding the relationships neurologically. You know, And we're talking about neurological uh, applications of what happens in the body and how it can ultimately cause other issues all the way through. Uh, 
I want to remind all of you, by the way, just to have, take the opportunity, this coming Wednesday evening at the Rizal Center for Healing, we're doing a special program for you. Uh, it's Healthy Holiday Eating, and uh, we'd love to have you as our guest. Uh, Eva al is going to do the presentation. So if you're at a loss of what to do for the holidays, uh, join us. It's uh, it's going to be a very interesting, revealing program. All you got to do is call us at 703-698-7117 or go online at rosellecare.com and uh, register. We're happy to have you. And I promise you, you're going to go say, oh, okay, I can do that. That's great. That's good eating. Yep. And it's going to be tasteful eating as well. I can promise you that. Dr. Mike, let's get back a little bit. Let's talk a little bit more and we'll kind of set the stage for the second half of the program before we start taking your calls. Uh, what, you know, let's talk about this vertical dimension. We talked a little bit about, you know, the TMJ uh, being in proper alignment. We talked about that it is the pump handle for the cranial mechanism, 22 bones of the skull, and that they're dependent on normal respiratory motion because they slightly microscopically or millimetrically, I'm sorry, uh, open and expand, pulling on the covering uh, that's underneath it, and, and that covering acts as hydraulic pump. Uh, as you breathe in and out, and it can cause all kinds of neurological aberration. One, we said that, uh, you know, it can cause headaches, it can cause neck and shoulder pain, it can cause uh, even aberration, if you will, in uh, learning patterns. Obviously, not, it's not the only cause. There's other causes. Uh, and, but we said that, so what else, uh, you know, do you look at, do you see when it comes to these types of um, misalignments. I asked you the question early on, Ken, you know, uh, the upper cervical and neck and shoulder problems come from bad dentistry. Uh, what does that really mean, bad dentistry? What happens? Well, I think main thing is, is that when you were talking about the vertical dimension, uh, it's not just the vertical component. Uh, your The muscles of your head and neck, are they all have a proper resting length when they're relaxed their tension should be very relaxed uh, but if their jaws are misaligned meaning their upper jaw is too small or they're overclosed in their bite uh, such as class 2 bites uh, things like that then their muscles are constantly in tension because they're not able to relax uh, and it can cause uh, retrusion of the mandible it can cause uh, headaches it can cause uh, TMJ, TMJ problems it can cause uh, sleep apnea. So those are the main ones uh, that a malocclusion can cause. But in terms of bad dentistry, I mean, I don't think any dentist out, is out there doing bad dentistry, but it can a single tooth can affect the occlusion. And the micro trauma that it can cause can affect how that person chews and functions and can eventually affect uh the neuromusculature as well as their TMJ joints. So, you know, just recapping a little bit what we were talking about, when, when somebody breathes improperly uh, and they're a mouth breather instead of a nose breather, you said that their nitric oxide levels are going to be lower than what they should be. And we know that nitric oxide is critical to sustaining heart, sustaining the brain, right. and other systems in the body. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the, the enzyme that's mainly... Uh, uh, responsible for turning the oxygen into nitrous levels is only found in your paranasal cavities and in the linings of your nostrils. And if you're breathing through your mouth, you're just not converting enough uh, nitrous levels in your blood. So, so people that mouth breathe are not going to have uh, an optimal function. Uh, so the only way you can do that really, and the proper way to really breathe is to have lip seal, the tongue on the palate of your mouth, uh, whether you're functioning or not functioning, and, and breathing through your nose. And unless you're eating uh, or talking or in speaking, uh, you should have those three things always there so, for proper function. So is, is that occlusion problem, that inability to breathe through the nose properly, are people born with that or is it something that develops or both no i think we were all born with proper genes to support all 32 teeth nowadays it's very common for people to have wisdom teeth extracted as if god gave us wisdom teeth to have them extracted later on to give you know some dentist job or something it is not normal to have any teeth extracted from your body 
it's only in the last hundred years, with all the industrialization and development and pollution and environment and food allergies and things that has caused the human beings to not be able to breathe properly when they're a kid because of all these allergies. They may have, you know, tonsillitis, adenoid inflammation and things that causes uh, them to develop this mouth breathing, which in turn doesn't allow the palate to fully expand and grow because the tongue's not up there. And these kids uh, will eventually develop malocclusion. Hold that thought. Hold that thought, Dr. Mike. We're coming up to the middle of the program. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. My guest in studio, Dr. Michael Chung. This is an interesting program. I'm learning things that uh, I was only partially aware of. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are in studio. I have a very special guest today, Dr. Michael Chung. He is the owner of Soft Touch Dental in Oakton. By the way, just if you want to find him, you can go to Soft Touch. It's spelled with one T, by the way, S-O-F-T-O-U-C-H, dentalcare.com. That's Soft Touch with one T, dentalcare.com. And those of you who'd like to just call us, 703-319-6990. And you can ask Dr. Mike off air you know, any questions that you would like. He's uh, a wealth of knowledge. We're talking a little bit about nitric oxide formation and how the nose takes advantage of increasing that production and mouth breathing unfortunately don't have the level that it should. Uh, there's some studies um, that we're looking at that says that, you know, that uh, it, nasal resistance uh, increases by approximately 200% the release of uh, oxygen, you know, within the, the system. So if you're not breathing properly, you got a problem. And so a lot of uh, what we're, you know, what we're struggling with, guys, as we're getting older, right, a lot of, uh, and I'm not going to put this out there, Dr. Mike, but uh, a lot of guys, you know, are struggling with libido and so forth. And um, most of the uh, uh, ED drugs are based around stimulation of nitric oxide. And, uh, you know, you go out and get things like arginine and L-citrulline and things of that nature, and then they combine it with a lot of, a lot of herbs. Uh, but here's the situation. So here's a question. It's kind of interesting, you know, for the guys out there. If this is true, I'm drawing a conclusion, right? So if it's true that if you breathe through your mouth and, a lot, you know, guys that are going into sleep apnea conditions breathe through the mouth, they don't breathe through the nose, uh, and because their jaw, their lower jaw retrudes and it closes the airway off, right? Uh, sure, they have some form of obstruction, yeah. Sure, so are these guys, these sleep apnea guys, these mouth breathers and so forth, obviously more prone to dropping nitric oxide, right? Absolutely. So subsequently they're going to have more hormone problems and perhaps as extrapolation, uh, ED problems. You know, I haven't seen a study on that one yet. It'll uh, be an interesting but, study. Uh, yes. Okay, so guys, if you're a mouth breather or if you do sleep apnea, it makes sense. you can call us and you know, or call us or just uh, send us a note or a text and tell us that you know, yes and yes or no and yes or whatever it is. It'd be an interesting study. It'd be a nice, re- you know, uh, literature or a survey report to see if that was true or not. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. Dr. Michael Chung, we're, we're talking about the vertical dimension of the temporomandibular joint and a lot of the ramifications and how it affects uh, the body. You know, the nervous system is so intimately involved in so much of uh, the balance of the head and neck and shoulders. You have the vagus nerve that comes uh, comes out of the lower portion of the skull and virtually touches. As vagus means uh, wanderer. It touches every every organ system all the way through, all the way down to the fundus of the bladder. So if that alignment isn't proper, if that first cervical vertebrae isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing, then you could have problems with any, potentially, any organ system all the way through. Now, understand, we're not talking about across the board, you know, 100% everything, but it's such a major contribution that if you know that there's an issue here, you know, that you're in appliances, you've, you know, you've had a major dental reconstruction, it's worth taking a look at and seeing if, you know, is this problematic, you know, across the board. Let's, you know, uh, let's talk a little bit more about how important this whole mechanism is, uh, Dr. Mike. You know, what else do we need to know about this? Well, I mean, I, I think the lesson we can all learn from this is that it's, it's 
extremely, extremely important during the development of the child to teach them how they can breathe through their nose, place and posture their tongue on the palate, and have their lips sealed as much as possible. And if they can't do that, then we need to figure out what it is. Most likely, the child is suffering from some form of allergy that doesn't allow him to keep his mouth closed for more than 30 seconds because he can't breathe. Uh, so he may need to see an allergist, or he may need to see an ENT and and, and check his adenoids and tonsils. Uh, and then maybe a neuromuscular dentist can uh, see if his jaw is developing properly. Because if there's not enough room in the jaw for his teeth, odds are that there is some developmental issues there. Um, and uh, the earlier you catch it, the better off the child will be. Uh, we can possibly avoid any TMJ problems and sleep apnea issues in the future. Uh, we could be doing a major, major service to this child, catching it on early on. And, and of course, as even as an infant, as a baby, never give them bottles. Uh, I, I think it is so crucial to breastfeed a child and teach them how to work all those important muscles in their tongue and their lip and, and being able to breathe while they're having lip seal. Uh, and uh, that allows their um, jaw to gr grow underneath their cranium the way it was supposed to be. All, and once they uh, wean out of that breastfeeding, they should go straight into solid foods and not these meshed up, you know, uh, foods that are made for convenience factors uh, by the companies to feed a child. But it is very, very important a young child start stimulating, biting and chewing and and doing all these things to stimulate the jaw growth so that they will have enough room in their jaw to develop all these and fit all these teeth in. Because nowadays, like I said, with all the environmental and uh, and pollution and, and modified foods and things, it's causing so much allergies on young children, they're not able to breathe through their nose. Uh, and they're developing a life, lifetime of problems down the road. You know, Dr. Michael has always been very courteous to Dr. Tom Rosell audience, and you know it's the holiday season, and he's always extended uh, on every one of our programs the ability for you to call and have a brief uh, consultation with them to check to see if there's something that you can do about your condition, and we're going to offer that to you. All you got to do is call him at seven zero three. 319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. And say that you heard the program, and he'll be more than happy to uh, uh, you know, uh, let you come in and evaluate you and discuss whether or not something can be done. You know, we've been ignoring our callers. Let's go to the phones. Sarah, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Yes. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. So I'm listening to everything that's being said, and my 12-year-old son snores and has allergies and chronic ear infections. Is this something that that's, would need to be looked at? From yes, absolutely. Standpoint? Very, very important that uh, uh, you get that checked out. Um, there, no child should be snoring. Uh, there is some obstruction there somewhere uh, in his nasal or paranasal areas. Uh, so is he, um, he snores too and is on a CPAP? Is right, that not right. Genetic then? Uh, it's not necessarily genetic. Uh, it's genetic and environment together. Uh, so if those environmental factors can be eliminated, the child could still develop properly. Um, and if they're having problems, sometimes we can get uh, make certain orthodontic and orthopedic appliances to help grow their palate properly so that it can grow to its full genetic potential. Uh, so it's very important that you give them enough development so that they have enough room for their airway so they don't snore, because it's not normal to snore nor grind their teeth if they're uh, gritting their teeth at night and grinding them. Uh, so we need to get those issues resolved. Uh, he may need to see an allergist that uh, is, does he have, can he breathe through his nose uh, very well or is it blocked? Um, he breathes. During the day, he breathes fine. Yeah, uh, but you have to make sure. Maybe you can close one nostril at a time and figure out if he has full uh, patency. Uh, and if he doesn't, he may have some form of allergies, or he may have uh, large adenoids or tonsils that may be blocking his airway. So you need to get that checked by an ENT, possibly. Okay. Uh, certainly, if you, you 
want to come to my office, I can certainly offer you a complimentary consultation, and I can look at him for you um, and see if Great. which factor may be causing that. Appreciate. Okay. Now, w would that just necessitate going into a like a rehabilitation process or orthodontics, or what would be well, what would happen? Well, traditional orthodontics will not help him, and it possibly could even make it possibly worse. Uh, traditional orthodontics will straighten his teeth, and a lot of times uh, it retracts their jaw even further. Uh, but there are some orthodontists that possibly will help develop his jaw more. Uh, uh, but definitely we have growth guidance appliances that are orthopedic and can grow his upper jaw to his full genetic potential and allow plenty of room for his tongue and his lower jaw to be in the proper position. That is the key. Uh, but he will not be successful long term if he still has problem breathing through his nose. And is this a good age to do it at? It's Absolutely. Fine. Earlier, the better. Perfect. Earlier you catch it, the better. But it can, this can be done even in adults. We have patients that are 70-plus years old that are in these appliances, and they were told by, uh, you know, other people that they're at that age that their jaw can't grow anymore. Uh, but that is not true because if that was true, that if you broke your bone, your bone wouldn't heal. They grow. Um, you may not grow any taller because – that part of the gene has already been expressed, but your jaw can grow if there's more room to grow because this person never fully expressed their genetic potential. Well, we're not quite 70 yet, but that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, thank you for your call. Appreciate it very much. We're here at 888 That's 888 Love to hear from you. Let's see if we can take one more call. We're coming up to a short break pretty quick. Kate, are you there? Kate, hello. I guess we we lost her. I'm I'm sorry. Triple eight six three zero ninety six twenty five. My guest in studio, Dr. Mike Chung, and we're talking about dental vertical dimension and how things uh, don't work properly when your uh, your TMJ and your vertical dimension of your lower and upper jaw aren't aligned properly. We know we've talked a little bit about how the nervous system is affected, how nitric oxide. Uh, is uh, limited because if you're a mouth breather, you're not getting it done like you should. It should be coming through your nose and stimulating your respiratory system properly. Uh, you know, there's so much that goes on with that. And, you know, everything from, you know, uh, oxygen depletion to uh, even generalized weakness throughout the body. You know, how often do you see something like that where a patient uh, over time starts saying that they're weak, but, you know, their, their, their body, their, their chemistry comes back normalize their physician says there's nothing sure. wrong with them but sure. they come to you and you say there may be a problem here sure i mean they may be suffering from some form of fatigue but why are they fatigued um they may not be getting uh good enough sleep uh they may not be getting enough oxygen throughout the night and that in turn puts your body in a very sympathetic system because your body is afraid that you will die because you're suffering from oxygen deprivation. So you're never fully going, engaging in a deep sleep and allowing your parasympathetic system to kick in. So you will never be fully rested if your body's on constant alert to wake you up because if you're not breathing, it will wake you up. And sleep apnea patients wake up fatigued. Yeah, they're just, they're, there's no recovery. They're, they never get into the deep areas right. where the body can heal. Right. There's not, about, not enough oxygen transport, and everything begins to suffer because of it. I want to remind you that Dr. Michael Chung uh, is the owner of Soft Touch Dental Care in Oakton, Virginia, and we really appreciate his work. He does uh, magnificent uh, applications of dentistry. And, you know, if you'd like to talk to him and get a courtesy evaluation to see if there's something that can be done for you, it's very simple. All you have to do is call him at 703 319 Six nine nine zero. That's seven zero three three one nine sixty nine ninety. Soft Touch Dental Care dot com, and that's with one T, by the way. Soft Touch S O F T O U C H Dental Care dot com. Uh, reach out to him, and I think you'll be surprised uh, the breadth of knowledge that this man has when it comes to, you know, what the mechanical aspects of uh, that that jaw, that TMJ, the the upper and lower dimension really can cause, um, you know, I'm learning things today, and, and I really appreciate that, Dr. Mike. You know, let's, uh, let's move 
uh, along a little bit and, you know, get into the adult world. Uh, some, you know, and we, we have people that over the years they have teeth extracted and, you know, they never have anything put in. They don't have a spacer. They don't have a bridge. They don't have an implant. Uh, they just let them move and everything moves to the front. And now you see that there's an upper and lower jaw uh, that don't align properly anymore. How significant? Oh, the, this, that discrepancy is significant, uh, mainly because the lower jaw that needs to move forward, allowing plenty of room for your tongue and your palate and all the soft tissues back there so that it doesn't close off your airway, is not able to do so because your upper jaw is, is too small and it's stuck behind the upper jaw. But if you ever see patients with class 3 bite, which some people call the bulldog bite, they never have TMJ problems because their jaw is forward of that, and they were able to bypass the pain because their jaw and their disc and their TMJ joint is not stuck behind it. Uh, it is not an ideal bite either, but those patients never suffer with TMJ problems. Really? Never. That's very interesting. That is incredible. You know, I would have, when you, at first blush, when you think about something like that, it's uh it's amazing. When you see patients over the years and they have their teeth are crowded, but they're rotated and they bunch up in the front, you know that they're not hitting properly anymore. You know, what's the what's the angle on that? How uh, how bad of a malposition is that or is it just one of those things that happens? Well, it doesn't happen if if there was enough room in the jaw. The It only happens because how how your teeth stay in your mouth is the tongue muscle on the inside uh, makes the arch form nice and big and wide, just like the shape of your tongue. And then on the outside is your lips and your cheek muscles and, and those buccinator muscles. That balance, that counterbalance is what keeps that nice U shape and plenty of room for all those teeth to stay nice and straight. Now, if you start uh, doing some dentistry and lo losing some vertical dimension or or that bone was just never fully grew out to its full potential, now these muscles are going to overpower that and they're going to start being squeezed into a tighter U-shape, and then there's no room for the teeth, so they start rotating, and people will come in and say, well, as I get older, my teeth are starting to uh, rotate and get small and crooked, and, and can I just put braces on and fix it? You can do the braces and, and fix it temporarily, but if that neuromuscular issue is not corrected, it will, they'll get crowded again. Uh, so it's very, very important that we develop the jaw to the proper width and uh, dimensions so that all the muscles are in a nice, uh, relaxed physiologic position uh, always, except when they're functioning. And then they will be able to function properly and more efficiently if they're in the correct position. You know, it's incredible. When we see patients that come <coughs> in the office from all kinds of uh, different maladaptive uh, Ilks, if you will, you know, one of the, the most horrible things, in my opinion, is, you know, women that are put on bisphosphonates and some of them will cause them to lose calcium in the jaw. And so when you see that, you do see teeth begin to shift. Yes. And we're going to, you know, we'll touch upon that just uh, uh, momentarily when we come back after the break. But, you know, you see that, you see osteoporotic conditions, both in men and women today, by the way, which is amazing. You know, that guys years ago, it used to be unheard of that a guy would become osteopenic, osteoporotic. But because of our lifestyles, our food and so forth, it's happening. We're coming up to a break. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. My guest in studio, Dr. Michael Chung. We'll be right back after some very important messages. Washington's Mall, 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rozelle. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rozelle live. I was going to say, as you do every Sunday at 12 noon, but this is, a, this is Redskin football time, and subsequently we're on Saturdays at 4 o'clock. You know, we uh, will be put back to our normal position after the first of the year, so mark it on your calendars after the year's out. Start tuning back in on Sundays at noon. And we want to thank you for those of you who listen because literally we get – Dozens and dozens of emails uh, after the program. We try to answer them all, and uh, sometimes it takes me a week, maybe 10 days, but I get to them. If you want quick information from any of the folks at the Roselle Center for Healing, all you have to do is call them at 703-698-7117. They'll be more than happy to get back to you. Don't forget we have a 
eating healthy holiday presentation for you this coming Wednesday evening. And we encourage you to be our guests if you'd like to find out what you can do to make a healthy holiday for your family. It's the, this 7 o'clock Wednesday on the 4th of December. Oh, my God, it's December already. My guest, as you know, Dr. Michael Chung, and we're talking about amazing things that a lot of us didn't know about dentistry and how that dimension, that upper and lower job positioning has an effect, how the uh, the effect it has on the mechanical system of the body, the neck, shoulders, and so forth, uh, can cause all kinds of uh, problems. Dr. Mike, what do you want our listeners to take away from everything that we've talked about today as far as, you know, what do they have to be aware of? Do you know, can they look in the mirror and, you know, uh, smile, put their teeth together and say, this is a problem, I need to go see Dr. Mike and find out what it's all about? I mean, if they, if they always suffered with crowding in their teeth or their bite is very deep or their lower jaw seems retruded, some people might think their nose is too big, but maybe a lot of times it's not that their nose is too big. It could be that their mid jaw has not developed properly and it's retruded. It makes the nose appear larger. Uh, if you're suffering with any of the TMD symptoms or possible sleep apnea, I mean, we have treatments that could really change their life. I mean, it can, uh, you know, you can really shorten your life by 10 years, up to 10 years if you don't get sleep apnea treated. You know, it's incredible that we go through our world, you know, back in the day, right? You know, uh, I had a dentist when I, was, uh, when I was a teenager that said, well, I think I might see a, a cavity, you know, a little hole in the tooth. And he said, well, we're going to watch it. And, you know, watch what? I don't know what was there, but you know, there, there was no real direction as far as how to take care of it. And, you know, then you go into the silver fillings. I think when I got to college, I had uh, one, one cavity that had been filled with, the, with silver. And so here's the other th thing. A lot of people have mouth uh, filled with silver, and we know that silver is really mercury and right. mercury and nickel and so forth. Right. And what do you see, and I want to touch upon this from a general health point of view, just in the mouth itself, somebody who's had a lot of silver amalgams put in over time, mercury, Sure. what do you see relative to distortion of the gum and the, the dental arches in the bone? Does that have an effect? Uh, you know, what I see mainly uh, uh, with mercury fillings is the amount of cracks that it causes on all these teeth. There. When you think about it, uh, these fillings are placed in the teeth, uh, replacing the hole that the cavity used to be. But the only reason that f metal filling stays in your tooth is because the dentist created undercuts all around that weakens the tooth so that that filling can't fall out. And then on top of that, you're chewing on this metal filling that wants to split your tooth apart like you were splitting a log. So one of my Number one emergencies in the office is people coming in with broken teeth caused by mercury fillings. Now, I know there are tons of other studies out there that causes, that you probably would know better, Dr. Rosell, is all the health problems it can cause. As a matter of fact, I think mercury fillings are pretty much banned in most countries around the world now, but only in the U.S. for some reason. Isn't it's totally that interesting? Evil. And, you know, I just think the associations and lobbyists here are so powerful and the insurance companies are so powerful and that is the that is the cheapest thing out there to put fillings in people's mouths so they continue to push it do you That's know the only answer I have. and every other profession dr mike other than yours any kind of mercury even a small amount which you would have in a dental filling they'll shut a school down if it spills on the floor right and it's incredible but yet a dentist, and I know you don't use them, by the way, so full disclosure, you know, Dr. Mike does not <laughs> use them at all, period, end of story. Do no harm. That's right. And But you're, you're putting your health at risk any time that you're exposed to mercury. And it's known. You can go on online and, and do the searches. And the bottom, uh, the bottom line on this is if you have a mouthful of mercury it, and your teeth are cracking, and it's, a, it's an open uh, portal for infection. It's going to get down into the, the root. Now you got a problem with, uh, you know, extracting the tooth or root canals or whatever, and, and it's uh, it's a heck of a. It gets much more complicated. It, yes, it does. And you know, so you got a double double edged sword here. So if you have any kind of mercury fillings, you need to have somebody that, to check them out, find out what the situation is, see if they're actually uh, causing you problems. But also remember, 
Dr. Mike is amazing when it comes to the mechanical applications and the neurological understanding of what happens with your mouth. Give the man a call, you know, 703-319-6990, and he will be happy to give you a courtesy consultation. You know, happy holiday gift from him. Please do it. We're coming up to a break. You know, this program is like way too short and love to have a much longer run at it. But having said that, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com.
Thank you.